hello everyone now in this lecture we are going to learn about methods for handling deadlock the learning outcome of this session are at the end of this session student will be able to describe what are different methods for handling deadlock now uh, first we will see how to deal with a deadlock problem now in previous videos uh, we studied uh, that how deadlock can occur into the system and there are four necessary conditions for deadlock to occur that is mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait so if all these four conditions are exist simultaneously in the system then deadlock may occur and if that deadlock occurs in the system then how to deal with that deadlock problem so first uh, is either we have to use a protocol to prevent or avoid a deadlock means uh, while designing a system design a protocol or uh, use a protocol to prevent deadlock either prevent that deadlock or either avoid that deadlock means that deadlock should never occur into the system second uh, if we don't have a deadlock prevention or deadlock avoidance then allow system to enter into deadlock state detect it and then recover it means we don't have deadlock prevention scheme we don't have deadlock avoidance scheme then obviously system will enter in deadlock state then if system enters into the deadlock state then we have to detect or the system have to detect the deadlock why and how it was occurred and once the detection is done then recover the system from the deadlock third case is ignore the problem altogether and pretend that deadlock never occurred into the system so the third stage is what deadlock occurred but pretend that like that ke nothing has happened and ignore that problem of deadlock and uh, continue your task or you can directly restart your system okay instead of detecting the deadlock instead of recovery from the deadlock uh, behave like that deadlock was never occurred into the system so these are the three cases uh, how we can deal with deadlock first either prevent or avoid if you don't have prevention and avoidance mechanism then deadlock will occur into the system it if, if it is occurred then detect it and recover it otherwise ignore the problem and pretend that deadlock never occur into the system so to ensure that deadlock never occur the system can use either deadlock prevention or deadlock avoidance scheme now how to handle with deadlock now deadlock prevention what is deadlock prevention deadlock prevention is a set of methods for ensuring that at least one of the necessary condition cannot hold in the system now that necessary conditions are uh so mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait so deadlock prevention means what one of these conditions should not occur into the system because if four conditions simultaneously exist in the system then deadlock will occur so uh design such a mechanism that one of the condition will never satisfy or one of the condition uh never hold in the system so this method prevents deadlock by constraining how request for the resources can be made this is the deadlock prevention scheme now in deadlock avoidance deadlock avoidance requires that the operating system be given in advance the additional information concerning which resources a process will request during its lifetime means what in deadlock avoidance Uh, before starting execution of any process that process must give additional information to the system that how many number of resources that process is going to request and use during its lifetime so here uh, system must have a prior knowledge for deadlock avoidance okay and uh, for deadlock prevention we are saying that one of the condition should not hold into the system so this is Uh, what the deadlock prevention and deadlock avoidance we can apply in a system so uh, here 
decide for each request whether or not the process should wait. Now, in deadlock avoidance scheme, uh, we also have to decide that, means system also have to decide that for every request made by that process, whether or not that process should wait. Okay. So, to decide whether the current request can be satisfied or whether it must be delayed, the system must consider the number of resources currently available, then the number of resources currently allocated to each process, the future request and release of each process. So this is how the processes, uh, this is how the system must have a prior knowledge in case of a deadlock avoidance. Whenever process makes a request for new resource, then check whether that re re uh, resource are currently available or not, whether it can be allocated to the process or not and the future, what are the future request and release of the each process. All these conditions we have to keep in mind. So, just pause the video and uh, write down the answer for what will happen if system does not imply either deadlock prevention or deadlock avoidance mechanism. If system do not have a deadlock prevention or deadlock avoidance, then system may enter into the deadlock state and system can provide uh, an algorithm that examine the state of the system. Okay? So, deadlock prevention and avoidance must be there in a system. If it is not, then deadlock may occur into the system. So, to, uh, to provide the algorithm, uh, the system examines the state of the system. To determine how it will examine the state, it will determine whether deadlock has occurred uh, in the system and if it is occurred, then there should be a recovery mechanism uh, from the deadlock in the system. <coughs> now handling of the deadlock. Uh, suppose we have no mechanism for deadlock detection and recovery, then the system is in deadlock state and there is no way of recognizing what was happened. If your system do not have any mechanism for deadlock detection or recovery, then that system is in deadlock state, but we cannot, user cannot recognize that what was happened. So, this undetected deadlock will result in deterioration of the system performance. How uh, it will affect your system? First, all the resources being held by the process that cannot run. Okay? Resources are already tied up more and more process may enter into the waiting state and they make request for resource and they enter in a deadlock state. They makes a request for resources and enters in a deadlock state. So, whole system uh, resources are tied up, the, all the processes are in waiting state, then your system cannot perform any task. Okay? So, uh, system will stop functioning and we will need to be restarted manually. So, if your system does not support for deadlock avoidance or deadlock prevention or deadlock detection and recovery, then system will stop functioning. We have to shut down our system or we have to restart our system manually. And after restart also, if does not happens, then we have to format our system. That is the case. So, in many system, uh, deadlock occurs infrequently. Sometimes system is in frozen state, but it is not in deadlock state. So, deadlock state is different and frozen state is different. Deadlock state means no task is performed by the process and frozen state means uh, consider a real time process which is running uh, some higher priority process. Okay? Either higher priority process is running or we have a non preemptive scheduler. Now, non preemptive scheduler means that scheduler will never preempt the resources okay? uh, or it will not print any process till it completes its task. Means your CPU is working, is in working condition, but as it is performing either some higher priority process or your CPU scheduler is non preemptive scheduler, then what will happen till the execution of such process, uh, it will never return a control to the operating system. It will never return control to the operating system and uh, that system enters into the frozen state, still that process completes its execution, but this, this is not a deadlock state. So, thus the system must have manual recovery method for non-deadlock conditions and may simply use the techniques for the deadlock recovery. So, in such case we must have some manual recovery methods for non-deadlock 
conditions and we may simply use such techniques for the recovery of the deadlock. <coughs> So this is how the deadlock prevention or uh, deadlock uh, avoidance mechanism must present in the system and if si system enters into the deadlock state then there must be a uh, deadlock recovery mechanism in the system. So this, uh, this is uh, what how we can deal or how we can handle uh, the uh, deadlock in the system. So these are the references. Uh, thank you.